Hello, and welcome to the fifth lesson in this beginner piano lesson series. Um, in this lesson, I will be teaching you the song Gypsy Band, and I will be teaching you French Minuet, and I will be teaching you eighth notes. And um, I will be teaching you out of the Accelerated Piano Adventures by Nancy and Randolph Faber for the older beginner. And this specific one is book one. But they, and this is the lesson book, they have multiple different books for different skills in the, um, for like book one. They have um, a lesson book, they have a theory book, they have a performance book, and that's just book one. They have multiple different books. They have book two, book three, book four of all of those different topics. And if you would like to buy them, I'll have them linked in the description below. So let's get into this lesson. This lesson will be starting off with Gypsy Band. And in this lesson, in this song, we, the new thing for this um, song is the tie. A tie is a curved line connected. It's connecting two notes on the same liner space. It means that the note will be played once, but you hold it for the length of the no both those notes. So if it's two whole notes, which is four beats each, if it's two whole notes connected together, you press down once and you count eight beats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if it was a half note, it would be two beats tied together with another two beats, which would be four beats, which would equal this. One, two, three, four. And this one comes up multiple times in this song, so you're going to want to pay attention to it and really learn how to do this, because this will be useful in future songs. So, with this song, you start off with your second finger, index finger, on the A, which is the top of the bass clef staff line, bass clef staff line, the top line. And then in the right hand, you're doing C and E, which we've done before. You've done that before in other lessons. So you, you press this down for, and then you count one beat, and then you come in on so you one, so you one B, and then you come in on the next, on the right hand. <clears throat> one thing you want to pay attention to is to not forget about the left hand, because I know you're just gonna be holding it. You don't want to hold it too long. You want to be, you want to get, be able to prepare for your other, um, <coughs> excuse me, other parts in this, um, thing. So. It would probably make more sense if I play it for you, but, um, and then you can try it on your own. And what I'd suggest first of all is counting it, and, um, first counting it and then playing it. But, um, if there's any parts, like certain measures that have trouble, you have trouble with, or certain sections, just take that small section and play that small section until you can play it correctly. So here we go. This is Gypsy Dance. I mean, Gypsy Band, sorry. the end of the song but um another part that could be hard is if you're doing the one and three in the um right hand but then you go you go from one and three and then you switch you, you don't and then you go to at the fourth finger that's what i practice doing but it's not too gonna be too bad because it's in half notes one two and then you also, it may look very similar, measure five, but instead it's the same thing as measure one, except that you're not doing one and three, you're doing two and four. So you're doing the D and the F. But then in measure nine, you go back to measure one, which is. And then 
measure 11, which is two measures before 13, and you go back to um, the same thing as five, which is the two and four again. And then for the ending, so for the last two measures, you go three, two, one, three, two, one, one, two. Move your hand so you can play your um, pinky on the A, which is right here. So you go three, four, one, two, three, four. And if you so desire, you can go down the octave. That's another option, but it all depends on what you um, want to do and desire. So, yeah, that's another way of doing that. There's just, you can do it or down the octave. Preferably, I like to play the first two notes. The, I like to play the last measure. I like to do this. And then three, four, and then the last note. But I would suggest just doing it whatever is easy, whatever you feel you um, think sounds best for you. So, yeah, this one's going to be not too bad, but you're going to want to watch out for the And you want to, this song, you want to figure out what measures are the same, and you want to, like, take the sections that repeat and learn them, so then you'll know them. For the other times they repeat because this song shouldn't be that bad because it has um, multiple sections where it repeats like measure one and two repeat or measure one repeats and measure five rep um, is repeat is, is in another section that's also in another section so as long as you learn those, those two pieces it'll be easy because you can but um already know those pe you already know that when it comes up later in the piece. So that is Gypsy Band. And um, as always, another suggestion is to pause the video until you get it ready, and then you can um, move mosey on to the next song. Also comment if you have any trouble or need any extra tips or any questions, because I would like to know your questions because that interests me and I want to help you with your questions. Okay, now on to eighth notes. An eighth note looks like a, a quarter note, like it's a circle with a line, or a circle with a line like this. I don't know if this makes any sense, but, but then it's got like a little flag thing on the top of the line. And eighth notes, like quarter notes or walking notes, like, uh, if you were walking, that would be quarter notes, unless you're like speed walking, which is different. But uh, and then quarter notes walking at a steady pace, and then eighth notes are basically the running. So um, you got quarter notes: walk, 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 running, 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 running. Yeah. So. With you, whole note is four beats. Whole note, four beats. Half note, two beats. Quarter note, one beat. And then the mysterious, mysterious eighth note is half a beat, 0.5. So it takes two, two eighth notes to equal one quarter note. So if you have a measure of four quarter notes, it would be eight eighth notes, because it's double. Dub so it's half as much half as much so a full four beats of eighth notes would be like this one and two and three and four and yeah and the way to count them is you count them one and one and one and one and but or, or if you're doing it in the context of a piece of music you'd be one and two and three and one and two and three and four it's whatever number and then and. Da, da, da. 
That's how you count them. And um, that's what we're going to be using for this song, French Minuet, that we'll be teaching you right now. And with the French Minuet, you have a new um, dynamic marking, which in the piece, it shows it as MP. And um, terms, it means, it means mezzo piano. And that means mean, moderately soft. That's what the meaning of it is, is moderately soft. MP, mezzo piano, moderately soft. And um, there is a MP, or mezzo piano, moderately soft, in the first measure. That's where it shows up in this piece. The thing I like about this piece is that it gives you the, uh, the eighth note counting for the first two measures, but then it assumes that you can learn on your own and figure it out on your own, basing off the first two measures. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to count off the, the piece, and then we can go um, play it. But I'll be counting the treble clef, because that's the one with the consistent eighth notes. So here we go. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one two three so it's not too hard it's basically just one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and that's the rhythm for the the, the top right hand the entire piece except for the last note which is one two three so I'm gonna play it at full um full dynamic um everything just full performance of it. And you're starting off with your thumb on which note? Yep, that's right. It's the G note right up here. It's the second line in the treble clef. And then once you get to measure four, which is the measure before the big five, you come in with the left hand on which note? Think about it. Yep, it's the B. It's the top of the um, bass clef. It's right here. You come in with the um, bass clef, or you come in with the left hand there, and then you play just three notes. One, so it goes two and three, and then in the measure. Because there's the last measure. The measure before the last measure, you come in with the left hand on the G. One, two, three. So in, in this song, you only are actually playing the left hand in two different measures, mainly because you're focusing on the eighth notes. That's the main scale you're going to be learning for this section. Okay. So I'm going to play this for you at full performance. So here we go. That's that song, and the reason there's not very much in the left hand is because you're working just on the, on eighth notes. One and two and three and four and one and three and one and two and three and one and two and three. One and two and three and one and two. So, you 
can figure out the right the right hand, the left hand is going to be not too bad. And you could also try it with just the left hand, or sorry, not just the right hand, because the left hand's very minuscule. And but adding it would be good too. And so now I'm going to do the um, <coughs> teacher duet. Since this isn't a terribly hard song and it's mostly the left hand, I mean, sorry, it's mostly the right hand, my mistake. Um, you should be able to do it with the um, teacher duet once you can play it um, at a really good um, skill level. And one thing to remember is that you're still doing this very smoothly. You're not staccato at all, which is very harsh and attacky. And um, once you're ready, you can um, play along with this teacher duet. So I'm going to be playing with the left hand while you're playing with the right hand and left hand. So this is the teacher duet whenever you're ready. One, two, three. That is the teacher duet, and I know on this song it it says that you're supposed to play an octave higher, but since we're playing on different pianos in your in your house, wherever you are, learning this over your YouTube, you can just play this in the regular octave. But if you want to, you can play this an octave higher because it allows you to be a little bit be more be more present in the song instead of blending in. And this was French minuet by Jean Philip Rame and he lived from 1683 to 1764 in France and if you enjoyed this is the end of the lesson series just so you know and the main focuses were the eighth note which is one and two and three and that's how it goes and the tie was another main focus which tied two notes together basically you play the note once and whatever two notes are tied together that you add those notes together. So if, so if it's two half notes together, it's like two, t two half notes tied, which would be four. One, two, three, four. If it's two whole notes, it's like you're, it's like an eighth note. It's like an eight count note. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then also, a big focus for all of these songs that has been in this lesson and last lesson is to be smooth because you have um, legato, you know harshness. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe for more content like this, and join me in the next video. And also, if you have anybody who you know that would like to learn the piano or desires to learn an instrument, please share this video with them because they'll get a lot of content from this video and learn how to play the piano. Thanks for watching. See you next time in the next video.